We got a problem, fellas, but don't worry. I'm gonna show you the sketchiest of sketchy repairs. <laughs> about this part being a common failure point in Nissan Infiniti cars, particularly in the G's, Z's, and now the Q50's. And I've had a lot of people ask the question lately on what they need to do to remedy this issue because they're finally experiencing it in their Q50's. And there really isn't a good remedy. But I've been fortunate. I've been fortunate that I haven't experienced any issues. And you know, I got this new, this new uh, brace from Soul Function. Uh, which you guys probably saw in a recent video. I'll be doing the installation of that uh, part coming up here shortly, but I got it underneath the car and what do you know? <sighs> I see the black, greasy, slimy residue coming down the rear diff. Telltale sign of a failed rear differential bushing. Again, common failure point on G's and Z's. And now, after about 60, 70, 75,000 miles on the Q50s, they're becoming a common failure point as well. And I thought I was gonna be lucky enough to get out of it. And I knew I should have gotten rid of this car before these things start to fail. But sure enough, at 68-ish, 68,500 miles, rear diff bushing, gone on the Q50. Now you won't see much residue on the rear diff now, but normally it just runs down. You can see the bushing up here. Normally it just runs down the rear diff and you'll get a trail here, you'll get it spraying all over your exhaust pipes and whatnot. I, you know, just my first reaction was to clean it off with some brake cleaner, but I, I, I guess I should have known I was gonna make a video about it, but I had a, a perfect trail of black residue running right down from the subframe. And now if you look up here, if we can get, get, miss the shadow, you can see the residue on the bushing itself. It definitely looks wet and greasy, like there's a hole in it around this bottom side. And you can actually see a little bit of the residue right here. I think the hole is probably on the diff side, uh, but you can't get to it. But see if you can see this when I, maybe you can hear it. Now, now it's raining super hard, but when I push on it, I can hear it on the other side like there's a hole it's like gooey noise so oh and it's like total you can push up top and it's almost like it's totally empty there it's just soft rubber up there so uh, it's definitely leaked all the stuff out unfortunately damn it so it's not a huge deal if you happen to have a Z or a G because you can find replacement rear diff bushings for those cars. Poly diff bushings or solid diff bushings from Z1 Motorsports, for example. Relatively easy fix, you just drop the rear differential, replace those bushings, pull, you know, pull them out of there and press them in, and it's not that big of a deal. Unfortunately, the Q50, there aren't any available. Now, I've checked with Z1 Motorsports, and they told me that they'll have one coming out for the Q50 relatively soon. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's next week or next year, but, until then, I think I have a really crappy, really sketchy, really suspect potential fix for it. Now, the reason that I'm gonna go this route for now, temporarily, is because they don't sell uh, factory replacement rear diff bushings for these. The dealership is going to make you buy a rear subframe with the diff bushing in it, which is like $1,500, $1,800 in some cases, and they're gonna charge you another thousand or $1,500 to replace that rear subframe if you can't do it on your own. That's annoying. I'm not spending $2,500 or $3,000 to replace a rear diff bushing. And like I said, there is kind of a little sketchy uh, temporary fix that we're gonna do today that I got from Motivate DIY. If you've seen that channel, I don't know if he's posted anything uh, lately, uh, but 
a lot of interesting information on that channel, uh, and this is where I got this idea. So we're gonna, we're just gonna go for it today. See what happens. Like I said, I haven't noticed any, I haven't noticed any um, problems. I haven't heard any clunking or noticed any rocking or re weird problems. Uh, but it probably just ruptured. Uh, so maybe some of the rubber has a little bit of rigidity left in it. Although you can press it pretty easily right now. Um, it's it's stiff enough to where it hasn't uh, been noticeable but as we continue to drive and continue to beat on the car and maybe that's the case too just in regular daily driving situations you're not really pushing the car you're not getting a lot of flex there in the rear diff section uh, but if you're to launch the car you probably get some wheel hop uh, probably reduce the amount of grip that you're getting overall just because you're just really squishing that rear end down uh, and you'll start to notice the fatigue in that empty bushing so I guess let's get to the repair. So the suggested and demonstrated repair on Motivate DIY is just filling that rubber, that hollow rubber with some five minute epoxy. Five minute epoxy resin, um, here it is. Probably use two of these, got a little syringe, I'll poke a little hole in it and you just fill it up in it. And really, you know, I guess it makes sense. Like I said, it's pretty sketchy. <laughs> and we'll see if it actually works. But the idea really is just to fill that empty cavity now to where there's not as much flex. You know, you don't want that rear diff, diff twisting and torquing under load now, uh, just because it's like a, almost like an empty rubber balloon. So if you fill it with this stiff or hard epoxy, it's not gonna leak out. It's gonna harden itself so it won't leak out of the cracks or the holes in that little hollow bushing uh, and it'll prevent I guess that flex now is it a long-term fix definitely not is it even a good short-term fix not really but when you don't have any other options what are you gonna do uh, I mean like I said not spending three thousand dollars on replacing the damn thing the whole subframe and knowing that Z1 is coming out with uh, an aftermarket replacement or poly bushings for the rear diff of the Q50 soon you know, I just want to wait for that. And I'll let you guys in a little secret. I'm really thinking heavily about going LSD now that I've really kind of determined that I'm going to keep this car, no matter what the next vehicle is that I purchase. Um, I might as well go with the Z1 LSD. And if I'm going to be pulling the LSD or if I'm going to be pulling the rear diff to replace it with the Z1 LSD, I might as well just do the, the fix or the replacement of the bushing at that time. So I'm not going to take everything apart now put the rear diff in and then have to take it out with a bad bushing and then take it out all again just to replace the bushing. That's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. So again, sketchy? Suspect? Yes, definitely. Uh, are we going to do it? Hell yeah. Here's a little more evidence for you actually. You can see where it's gripped down. The underside of the subframe here kind of followed this little bracket drip down onto the exhaust pipe. Awesome. The top and bottom are sort of separated by two solid pieces of rubber on each side of the bushing. Let's see if we can see it. You can see the solid pieces of rubber towards the side, but the top and bottom chambers are still connected, so liquid can flow from top to bottom still, as far as I know. But pushing on it now, the bottom feels a little more firm than it did the other day. The top, like I said, feels like an, an empty rubber bladder of some kind. So I may not poke the bottom one. I may not open the bottom one, the bottom part up. I may just fill from the top and see what happens. I got two of these little epoxies ready to go. Mixes internally, it's a two part epoxy and I got a couple of pokers. See if we can get a hole in here. I, don't, I hope I don't block your view. I'm trying to see, to see what angle I should go at. Maybe like that. There goes nothing. There's nothing coming out, so that means there's nothing in there. Okay. I'm just gonna shoot her in. Takes a little bit to get through the nozzle.
chill. Just wait for it to dry, I guess. I can actually see again now where the rubber on top and bottom is sort of bulged out again, like so there is a, some pressure of a material in there. In this case, it's five minute epoxy. Um, got, I, you know, I, I guess that's it. It shouldn't leak out. It's thick, thick enough, and it's gonna harden pretty quickly. I'm not sure how hard it gets, uh, you know, when you just pour it into a cavity like this, but it'll definitely be gooey. And uh, if you guys didn't notice, I put the um, floor jack underneath the diff and just put a little bit of pressure on it. Oh, look at this. You can see when I was pressing it up, pushing it, I didn't even notice it. It's dripping that black crap on the jack. So it definitely had a hole in it. Um, but I put the jack underneath the rear diff and just put a little bit of pressure on it. Maybe you lift it sixteenth of an inch or something like that. Maybe an eighth of an inch. Just to sort of get that uh, the diff bolt centered in the bushing. So I got some of the you know the the epoxy on the bottom side of the bushing as well. That's really really it for the sketchy rear diff bushing fix. Um, ten minutes. It's a ten minute fix. Uh, five minutes to get the vehicle up in the air and situated, poke a hole, and then fill it with five minute epoxy, and then wait five minutes for the epoxy to get hard. So that epoxy has been drying overnight. It's got the power up on the stands. Do the old push test. I don't hear the squishing as much. Push on the bottom the top is the real test. Ooh. It's hard on the top. Hard all around the edges, but still soft on the bottom. I don't hear the squishing noise as much, but it makes me wonder if the top and bottom are truly connected. It's hard as a rock on the bottom, or on the top. I may have to fill the bottom too. janky like I said but somebody actually made a really good point then they said what's the difference you were driving on a bad bushing to begin with so filling it with a, an epoxy making it essentially a, a, a solid a differential bushing it, what's the difference right so it's only temporary we tried it out we'll see how it goes um, th there's still movement in it obviously you can see from underneath the car but I'm not hearing any clunks or grinds or weird noises any clunks or bangs or anything like that so We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Keep an eye on it. And um, hopefully Z1 comes out with the rear uh, diff bushing for the Q50 here in short order. But I'll keep you guys posted. Anything I hear, uh, you can be sure that I'll, I'll get one right away and get it installed. So thanks guys for watching. See you in the next one.